Here are your iPhone 12 camera tips to shoot better photos. I've got a bunch of tips on the list that go for the iPhone 12 in particular, but to be honest, a lot of these you can use on other iPhones as well, especially if you have iOS 14, because there are some different features that you can use that can really take your photos to the next level. So let's get into the first iPhone 12 camera tip. We have the new exposure controls. This is really awesome to be honest. Now this isn't just for the iPhone 12. If you have iOS 14, you can get this. At least my iPhone 11 Pro has it too. So this is really great now and you can have much more control over your images. So this definitely works best for high dynamic range scenarios. So that really means a really bright part of the image and a really dark part. So you can expose for the area that you want to see. It also works really well if you have maybe uh, someone's face and then a really bright background and the phone is kind of switching between them, not really knowing what to expose for. So what you can do is either touch the arrow at the top of the screen and then the options will come up, but you can also just swipe up on the screen. Anywhere on the screen, just swipe up and the same menu will pop up for you. From there, you can do a couple of things. The first is just tap and hold to lock the focus because whatever you're taking an image of, obviously you want your focus on that and you don't want that to change. After that though, when the focus is locked, you can then press all the exposure controls. So this is not really full manual, but it's essentially a way to change the exposure compensation. So you can basically tell the phone you want the image a little bit brighter or a little bit darker. It's not full manual, but it's pretty good just to get the exposure that you want. So you can basically swipe down to the left for a darker image or to the right for a slightly brighter image. Sometimes the HDR on the iPhone doesn't work in those situations. And so if you can lock your focus and then maybe make the exposure a little bit darker, sometimes the HDR can kick in and that means you can get a much better image than just letting the iPhone do it automatically. And before we go on to the next tip, I will link some accessories below for the iPhone 12 that you may need, especially cases and screen protectors. I've got these from Totally. you can see here. I've got four with me. The matte versions are super thin and lightweight. They're almost like a skin. The jelly case is a little bit thicker and it does also cover the buttons as well, which the matte skins don't. Totally screen protectors are also pretty good as well. Very robust, heavy, thick, just what you need. Check those out and some other accessories for photo in the description. But the next tip is choosing your aspect ratio. And essentially there's three ways you can do it on the iPhone. You can have a four by three, which is the normal aspect ratio for photos. You can also go to a 16 by nine though. So depending on where you think you're gonna send this photo or use it, you might wanna choose this one. If you wanna go and post an Instagram, especially stories, you're gonna need 16 by nine. Four by three isn't gonna work for you, but you can also choose square. So if you wanna post an Instagram, you wanna choose a square option and basically get your photo right and then not have to crop it and change it when you're on Instagram or pretty much anywhere else. One thing you may assume is that by having a 16 by nine picture, which obviously takes up way more of the screen, that you're gonna get more in the shot, but this actually doesn't happen. The field of view on the iPhone is set, especially on that ultra wide. I think it's like 120 degrees. So whether you shoot a four by three or a 16 by nine, 16 by nine will take up more of the screen, but it won't go beyond the 120 degree field of view of that ultra wide. So just to keep that in mind. Then the next tip is to use grids. So actually to get grids, on your iPhone camera, you have to go into iPhone settings. It's kind of annoying, but you have to go into your main iPhone settings, then search for the camera settings. And when you scroll down, there'll be an option for grids there. So you can make sure that that's turned on and you can get grids on your iPhone camera app when you're shooting photos. This is just gonna help you compose images. So maybe you wanna take an image where the subject is maybe off to the side a little bit. So you can use the rule of thirds basically. So splitting the image up into a grid of three by three, for example. So you can just get some better looking shots like that. But also kind of a hidden feature in the iPhone is if you do use grids, you get these crosshairs that can really help you out. So if you ever shoot images from directly above, so you're holding your iPhone down and you wanna shoot something directly below it, if you've got the grids feature turned on, then the iPhone will give you this crosshair and it'll only come up when you do this. And it's basically going to tell you when the iPhone is perfectly level. This is obviously absolutely impossible to do without this. So you'll see the crosshairs in the middle, then you can change it round and it's basically telling you when exactly the iPhone is level by making it yellow in the middle. And then if you just take it just a little bit off level, then those crosshairs will move and they won't be yellow anymore. It's a really great feature to basically tell you exactly when your iPhone is level if you're taking shots from above. 
Then we move on to live mode and live mode is something that I usually turn off because I just don't want those movies before the images. And I know a lot of you guys, I think, turn it off as well, but it can be a really great feature. And I think these days it's kind of not used for the video, but more of actually choosing an image from the video. So if you have live mode on, as you know, it will take maybe a second or two of video around your image. Well, you can go into the Photos app, go to that live image, and then what you can do is basically choose a perfect photo from that video. You can literally just go and scroll around and find the absolute perfect image because you know a lot of the time maybe uh, things get blurred or you're moving the iPhone or a subject is moving and they're kind of not in focus or they're a little bit blurred because the shutter speed was quite slow. I think live photo is way more useful for basically choosing the perfect image rather than having three seconds of kind of useless video. The downside of live photo is that it does take up way more memory and storage. So depending on how much you have, if you want to use it, you might want to turn it on or maybe just leave it off. Coming to portrait mode, and this is specifically in terms of the iPhone 12 because the iPhone 12 is different this year. It has a new main camera, at least the lens is different. It has a wider aperture, and so you may be able to get much better portrait shots as compared to other iPhones. So if you do switch into portrait mode on the iPhone, it actually switches to the 2X telephoto lens, at least on the iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max it will do. Obviously, if you're on the 12 or 12 mini, it won't do that because you don't have a 2X. You can actually very easily switch it from the 2X to the main, just in the bottom left-hand corner, so that's really easy. You can definitely play around with this as well because obviously every situation is going to be different, but the main lens on the iPhone 12 especially has a better lens, and so you may want to switch to the main lens for portraits rather than using that 2X that it does automatically. Especially if you're close to your subject, then I would just switch to the main lens because the 2X is gonna be far too zoomed in and the main lens, because it has that better lens, is going to give you much more natural background blur. Also, when it comes to portrait mode, you can choose the f-stop. This basically is artificial blur. This only works in portrait mode. In my experience, going anything below about f4 looks super fake. You can tell straight away the background blur is fake. It's way too much. It's way more than even a professional camera would have. So in my experience, sticking above f4 is going to give a much more natural image. Also a really cool feature on the iPhone, and again, I don't think this is just the iPhone 12, I think it's definitely iPhone 11, maybe before that too, is using a tripod at night. So the iPhone can actually know when it's on a tripod thanks to the accelerometers inside, so it knows when it's locked off on a tripod. It will then give you way better nighttime controls. So there is a night mode on the iPhone. It will maybe take an exposure for a couple of seconds if you're hand holding it, but if you lock the phone off on a tripod, it will expose a much, much longer image and you're gonna get way better night mode shots. Again, I'll link some cheap tripods in the description that you can have a look at, some small ones, some big ones that you can use with the iPhone or pretty much any smartphone. But certainly if you wanna take way better night shots and Astros, you're gonna need a tripod or at least just try and lock it off so the iPhone isn't moving at all. And the last tip is to take advantage of all the new features in the Photos app. Apple's stock Photos app is really good now and you have a ton of different features that you can use to change the style of your images. You can also download apps like Photoshop, which are pretty good, Snapseed, which is really good, but the Stock Photos app pretty much has all of these too. It's actually really, really easy. There's auto features as well, but if you want a specific look, there are other looks within the Photos app, so you can make things look wintry or like they were shot in summer and spring, absolutely everything else. So I would say just shoot everything in the normal camera mode first, then you can go and edit your pictures either in the camera app or download something like Photoshop, Lightroom, or Snapseed to change the style of your images. It's gonna really make them pop and make them stand out because obviously the iPhone is just gonna take normal standard images all of the time. The way that you make them look really great and stand out is by editing the styles. But that is my iPhone 12 camera tips. If you use any or know of any more, put them in the comments below so that everyone can see them. Also check out those links in the description and for way more content as well. Thank you for watching this one. Thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you in the next one.